the cerebral cortex of um, humans, uh, carnivores, most primates in general, have a series of uh, fissures, you know, crevices, and those are called sulci. So two major ones I want you to think about, this one right here, and this one right here. So this first one is called the central sulcus. And it divides not only the gyri, so these large hunks of meat that are here, uh, gyrus. So this is called the post-central gyrus, and this is called the pre-central gyrus. So not only does the central sulcus divide gyri like all sulci do, the central sulcus also separates uh, the frontal lobe, which is all of this stuff, from the parietal lobe, uh, which is all of this stuff. All right, so we have this separation into uh, the central sulcus dividing two major hunks of the cerebral cortex, two major gyri, and in addition, two major lobes of the brain, of the cerebral cortex. The lateral fissure, this guy right here, second one, it's called the lateral sulcus or the lateral fissure. Generally, we tend to use the word fissure for a particularly deep sulcus. The lateral fissure separates out the frontal and parietal lobes together from what's underneath it, which is temporal lobe. So the temporal lobe is all of this region here. Now, mind you, all of these lobes are being named for the bones that overlie them. So we have a frontal bone and a parietal bone, a temporal bone, and that's where we're going to be able to find these guys, right underneath those bones. Finally, there is a sulcus. Now, this particular figure has that sulcus out here on the lateral surface of the human brain. That's not true. This sulcus, which is called the parieto-occipital, is found on the medial surface of the human brain. So even though it's pictured out here as being on the lateral regions, it's not. You don't find it out here. It's, you have to turn the brain over and look at it. But that makes the occipital lobe, the region that's out back here, on the very uh, posterior portion of the of the brain. So this is the this is the caudal or posterior pole of the brain here. Now within each of these, oh, there, I should I should add, if we were to reach in and and pull the lateral sulcus open, we would find a a, a fifth lobe in here. It's called the insula. Insula means island. And it's actually buried inside this lateral fissure. So uh, we'll talk about that later on, but you should bear in mind that there's going to be a fifth region we have to deal with. Okay, so we have these five lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, and insular. But each lobe then is populated by some number of what are called cortical areas. An area of cortex has a unique input, set of inputs, a unique set of outputs and a unique set of functional properties. There are, th these are said to vary in number from one species to the next, and that makes sense. Um, humans are said to have something on the order of 200 separate areas. Now, a lot of that is incomplete data, but we'll go ahead and use the number 200 as a nice resting point for the number of areas we have. And you'll notice some of these are primary sensory areas so the primary auditory area is found here. It's actually found in the lower bank of the lateral fissure. The primary visual area in humans is found in a sulcus called the calcarine fissure. It is on the medial surface of the human brain. This, the precentral gyrus, is the primary motor area. And this, the postcentral gyrus, is the first somatic sensory area. So the first somatic sensory, primary auditory, primary visual, those are primary sensory areas. Primary motor, uh, that's going to be this precentral gyrus. Outside of those, areas of cortex are called association areas. And the model for these areas is they get their inputs from primary areas or from earlier sensory areas or from other motor areas. So let's take, let's take auditory system for an example. Primary auditory area here gets an input from the medial geniculate nucleus. So we can have MGN, MGN inputs coming into there. It then speaks to, or sends axons, 
to surrounding areas of auditory cortex. So those surrounding areas of auditory cortex are called association areas because they get their auditory response, or so this model goes, from the primary uh, auditory area. And then these guys are going to talk to even farther uh, removed areas of cortex. Most of human cortex, by this definition, is association. Rather than deriving its major drive from thalamus, these areas of cortex are said to get their major drive from earlier areas of cerebral cortex. So that's what we have. Uh, division first into lobes, lobes then uh, division into gyri, and then within, within various gyri are going to be functional, functionally distinct areas of cerebral cortex.